felt pretty good. All right, I want to talk a little bit about my Staccato C2 DPO with my Dawson Precision Ice Comp. Obviously, the weapon is clear. Uh, no magazine inserted, nothing in the chamber. I was an XD guy for a very long time. In fact, going even back prior to that, I carried a Beretta M9 in the Marine Corps. A uh, very 1911-ish grip angle with the Beretta M9. Got out of the Marine Corps, uh, found myself... Uh, shooting XDs, put tens of thousands of rounds, probably over 100,000 rounds through an XD over the years uh, and got tired of uh, trying to find slides milled for optics. I've been running red dot sights on handguns uh, longer than most I guess in, in, in the security uh, kind of community that I belong to is my, my profession. And so, you know, holsters are difficult. You start having to do a lot of stuff custom made and, and you know, at, back in the time, we're going 10, 10 years ago, maybe longer. Uh, back in those days, it was hard to find things that were made that were for an XD with the light, uh, compensators, uh, red dot sights, and then still being able to find retention holsters and stuff like that that I would need for work. Uh, so finally just bit the bullet, got a Glock 17, put a grip force adapter on there, which helps a little bit. And have been, I've been happy running the Glock 17 for quite a while as a duty gun and as a full-size handgun. And um, but I've always really loved the STIs. I love the idea of a double stack 9mm 1911. Uh, and have finally had the opportunity to get uh, what is now, you know, STI is now staccato. And you know, everybody thinks about the P. You know, if you're going to use it for duty purposes, everybody thinks about the P. I really like the idea of the, the footprint of a P. But I like, also like the idea of it being compensated. Um, and so to me, the C2 with the ice comp is really sort of like the P and the XC had a baby. It, it presents itself in a sort of a full-size Glock 17 staccato P kind of footprint uh, while still having a compensator. And look, you know, I've done videos about this in the past. You know, what, what belongs on a, a duty handgun? Uh, versus what shouldn't be on a duty handgun. Uh, I think there's ex there's exceptions to this rule, but if it makes you shoot, if it helps you shoot more accurately or more quickly, um, then then it then it's probably something worth uh, looking into, even for a duty or defensive carry gun. Uh, there was a time when people would say that's a handgun, not a hands gun. Uh, you know, so there's there's always been the naysayers over the years, and then it, you shouldn't shoot a red dot on a on a handgun or then you or you don't need a flashlight on a handgun you don't need a competition so there's there's always going to be those people that say well this thing's just for competition you shouldn't run it on a duty handgun i respectfully disagree with all of those things if it's uh, if it helps you be fast it helps you be accurate it probably has a place on a defensive or duty handgun as long as it isn't affecting reliability or safely safety in any way so there are some things on this gun that are not stock i've got a red dirt uh, aluminum trigger shoe and bow that is adjustable for not only pre-travel like the oem trigger is but also over travel so you'll see here in a second there's very little travel in this trigger which i like uh, for obvious reasons i've got the Aimpoint Acro P1. I would have loved to run the P2 that has a bigger battery and better battery life, and uh, but just couldn't find one in stock at the time. Uh, I do have this is the standard. A lot of people put the P grip module on the Staccato. This uh, C2. This is the standard C2 grip, um, and I've just you know home home brew stipple job there. And I, you know, but I've done quite a few guns over the years, so I feel like I. I can knock that out at home if I have to pay somebody to do that. I do have an SVI Infinity Trax Hammer. Uh, why do I have a Trax Hammer? Uh, because it looks cool. <laughs> There's no better reason for that. It does lay flush whenever it's forward. Not that that really means anything. Um, Surefire X300UA. Uh, it came from the factory with the Dawson Precision Ice Comp. Uh, that was a factory option. I added the Dawson Precision uh, Magwell. It's a fairly low profile Magwell. 
Uh, there's certainly much bigger ones you can run in, in competitions if, if you want to. And then I have the Shooting Sports Innovations Nitro Fin 2.0. You'll see that the stainless is showing here. That's because from the factory, the Nitro Fin 2.0 sticks out about that far. That certainly wasn't going to go any holsters, so I did had to do some fitting anyway to make it run on a hand fit gun like a staccato. Uh, it runs fine now. Um, it's, it's a little more cumbersome to lock to the rear, but as you can see, you can you can do it. It doesn't lock to the rear on the last round. That's that's the only thing I don't like about it. And, and you know there are some advantages to having your weapon locked to the rear, especially on a duty gun or defensive handgun. Um, but in my opinion. The rounds that are already in the firearm are more valuable to me and my ability to, to run those efficiently and effectively are more valuable to me than, than what might uh, be more effective or efficient in, in a mag change on a dry gun scenario. Certainly this doesn't encumber a tactical reload which is probably more likely to happen in the real world anyway where there's lots of rounds being fired. Um, and so being able to have a leverage point in the front of this gun uh, to me is worth losing the uh, last round lock open and it still runs fine in my safari land uh, level two i did have to do some modification on the hood you'll see that these two mounting points for for this little shroud that if it isn't really a retention device it isn't supposed to be it's supposed to just cover the lens there um, because of the square rear face of the acro uh, when this is down, it would just catch on it. It was basically functioning like a non-spring-loaded retention device uh, in either one of these two positions. So I drilled a middle position, and and what do you know? It it draws perfectly smoothly past that uh, once you trip the retention uh, device here, which I've also added a 3D printed, um, you know, enhanced lever. And one thing I really like about a 1911, 2011 is that when you draw this, it's very easy for that thumb just to fall right on that safety lever go ahead and defeating that safety lever at the appropriate time giving you an anchor point to mitigate recoil and then as that other hand slides through and you've got that once again you got that forward anchor point with the nitro fin so yes this gun has a lot of competition-y things on it um, but uh, I'm completely comfortable carrying this in a duty capacity of self-defense home defense capacity uh, I'll go ahead and show you the trigger pull get kind of close here and Helps if you take off the safety. I'd, I'd like it to. There you go. All right. Not a lot of travel there. No over travel. No real pre travel. And I'll let you see the reset or hear it rather. Because there's not a lot to see. All right. So, super uh, effective uh, trigger pull in terms of it being an, an efficient trigger pull. Luckily, you know, as I, like I said, I was carrying. Um, a compensated Glock 17, so a lot of my holsters were um, made for a Glock 34. Here is an OG kind of original gangster uh, tier one concealed axis. This is before the Elite and the Slim and all that. Uh, and wouldn't you know, it runs perfectly uh, with the Staccato C2. I did modify it a little bit. I flared this back portion out really just to accommodate uh, that nitro fin uh, I did take I was able to take a little bit of length out of here and refold this over so that you know it sits about a half an inch uh, more shallow in the waistband which is more comfortable on a big gun like this and you can also see there's a hole in the clips that's because I drilled a hole in the both sides of the clips one so I could access the anchor uh, screw and then move the whole clip down which effectively rises the gun up in the holster so that when it's sitting in the waistband uh, there's less of this down here digging into the nether region and whatnot. So, all it really needs now is a new, um, new what do you call it, wedge or whatever, so that, you know, because when it's, when it's sitting higher in the belt, it has a tendency to kind of roll forward a little bit. So with the wedge, I can push that back into me. And, and this, I have carried uh, quite a few times appendix carry with this just because it's a new gun and, 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 and you know, I like the capacity. And speaking of capacity, one, one good thing about, especially if you're, if you're gonna appendix carry it or conceal carry it from time to time, one good thing about the C2 um, is that I can still run that 16 round magazine and have a very low profile, less likely to print. I've got some 16 round magazines with an extended base pad. so. These are now 19 round magazines, so you can either have 16 and one, 19 and one, or I can do the 20 plus one uh, full size staccato mag. 
and uh, and it all fits in there fairly well. Looks looks right. It doesn't look you know especially with the magwell here from Dawson. Uh, this doesn't look you know strange uh, or like it's some sticking out like some you know weirdo magazine. Um, and I have the the option for this low profile uh, 16 round magazine uh, that I wouldn't with the P and obviously therefore less likely to print with the grip and an appendix carry holster um, because uh, of that magazine link. Uh, and the corresponding grip link, obviously. So I'll layer in some some video of me shooting this. I, I was on a different part of the range here than I am now. I'm, I'm here on the still ranges because it's the quietest place today to come and shoot this quick video. And so I'll, I'll layer in some video on the paper range. I think I was doing some build drills and stuff like that. All right, gonna do a build drill, six rounds, six yards. All A zone, staccato C2. Red dirt trigger, safari land level two. Trying to keep the whole thing under two seconds. We'll see. That felt pretty good. All right, total time 192. First shot was a 118. That's under one and a quarter where I want to be. 14 split, 13 split, 16 split. One five split and one six split. So I had two kind of long splits. I, I prefer them to be in the one three to one five range. But I'm new to the trigger, new to the gun, new to the holster, new to all this. Uh, super happy with that one nine two overall and under one and a quarter on the first draw. I certainly would like to get down to a second with this holster, uh, but we'll see. Appreciate it. Um, still got some time to get used to. I need to take some time to get used to, to the holster and where it rides and all of that getting used to the safety and the trigger and all this on the gun, but even with probably less than a thousand rounds through the gun right now, uh, easily getting under two seconds on a build drill, splits anywhere from 0.13, I think, to 0.16, and 0.16 is, is not, not where it needs to be. I, I really would like to get this get this holster myself, really, with this holster to more of a, of a one second draw time to that first round at like a six round build drill scenario and then you know stay at the 0.14 you know range for splits so th this should be an easy gun to get to a 175 consistent build drill at six yards uh which which is good it's 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 that's it's, it's a fairly fast build drill so anyway i uh, love the gun love the way it, it looks even with the uh, the mailboxy acro on there which i think is probably the ugliest optic besides a steiner um but it's this is, this is a beautiful in a utilitarian way, to, in my opinion. And to me, this is a, be, a beautiful in the way that a, an F1 race car is beautiful, that everything has a purpose, um, and, and the utility really is where the beauty comes from. Um, so anyway, appreciate your, uh, your, 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 your um, subscription. If you, if, you, if you are a subscriber, if you're not, feel free to subscribe. Hit the bell, do all the things everybody else on YouTube tells you to do, or don't, and just come here when you search things like staccato ct with c2 which is probably what brought you here in the first place so i will you will see more uh, videos coming uh you will see more of this gun in those videos uh super happy with it uh i'll throw in some some footage of me shooting it i'll probably in fact i'm probably here i'll probably i'll show you where i'm at now i'll run some rounds here at the steel plates here in a second and so you can kind of see it on the steel range and i'll layer in if i haven't already in the video the uh, build drill and stuff like that. So more to come. Appreciate it. See you next time All right, Let's make some plates fall down We did it.